All right, Mr. Mingledorf here. Today we're talking about the slope of a line. And many people say, well, what is slope? Well, the slope of a line is how you determine how steep something is. And, and we see around us all day, every day, like, a, um, like an airplane climbing an altitude. You know, we use algebra to describe slope so that we can transfer the information to one another. Um, it doesn't really work if you want to say, oh, it's really steep, right? Is that how you describe it? Um, maybe you thought the slide wasn't as steep as it was, but it turns out it was much steeper. So the two basic formats for describing slope are one, rate of change, and two, rise over run. And you may have heard these terms before. Rate of change is taking the change in the dependent variable and putting that on top of the change in the independent variable. Um, rise over run is the same thing. We take the vertical change and put that over the horizontal change and we, we, we result with like a fraction um, or a whole number sometimes. It can be either one. Um, sometimes slope is zero. Sometimes it's undefined. Think about renting a DVD. Um, it costs two dollars for every one day. So if you have it for one night, it only costs you two dollars, right? So the cost is actually the dependent variable. The amount you're going to pay depends on how many days you have the DVD, which makes the, the number of days the independent variable. When describing slope using rise over run, it's pretty simple. Think about a staircase that needs to go up to a second level that's like eight feet high. Um, we want to know how many feet across did we, did we use in order to get up eight feet high? The staircase, what is the slope of the staircase? So if the base of the staircase is 12 feet long, and the height is eight feet tall, the change in the vertical is eight over the change in the horizontal, which is 12. So we would express the slope as eight over 12. And you can always reduce these, they're just fractions. So it could have a slope of two thirds. So for every three feet forward, we rise two feet, meaning at six feet, we've gone up four feet. And then at 12 feet, we've gone up eight feet. Um, and construction workers use this every day. You may have a staircase in your home. Grab a tape measure. Check it out. All right, so let's work one of these out. Let's do an example. Let's go back to the DVD example. We're all familiar with that. We know that it costs about $2 to rent the DVD, right? $2 per day. Now I have the cost and the days, right? So one is dependent upon the other. Can you figure out which the dependent variable is? That's right, it's the cost. The cost depends on how many days, right? So I'm going to put my independent variable on the left side and I'll put my dependent variable on the right side. Looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and plot out a few days here um, and then associate the cost. So we know it's two dollars per day. So I'm just going to increase by two each day. Really simple here. Um, so once I have this, I can kind of see if I want to keep it one day, which is optimal, right? It's only two dollars and I get to watch the movie. If you're like me, you'll watch it on the second or third day and you'll return it somewhere way down here for probably more than the DVD cost. So once we have this super fancy table made, um, we can go ahead and sketch a graph that'll help you see the line or, or the pattern um, or the slope um, relating the number of days to the cost, right? The rate of change, how much money, right? For the amount of days. As the days change, right? What happens to our cost? So these are all positive numbers, so we'll only be working here. I'm going to go ahead and label my axis, the x on the horizontal and the y here. And this is just a quick sketch, nothing fancy. So looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and label x as my days and y as my cost. So if we plot out on here, the first day, it will be $2. The second day, it will be four dollars. The third day, 
six dollars, right? So now we have a little sketch graph, right? And we know that this is just going to go down to zero, zero, right? Because if I don't rent the DVD, I don't have to pay them. Um, and then all the way out to where uh, Mr. Mingledorf usually finds it on the floor of his car after it should have been due a week ago. Okay, before we mentioned a, a staircase that was... It's 12 feet in length. Trying to get to the second level, which is 8 feet high. Right, so we're kind of looking at this and this is our staircase, right? All right, so let's look at this as rise over run. It's really simple here, right? What is the rise here? Well, we've gone up eight feet, right? So I'm going to put that eight feet. And I'm going to divide it by, right, we've got 12 feet. So we'll put eight feet over 12 feet. And we can reduce that, right? Each one of these is divisible by four, it looks like. So I can go two feet So what does that actually mean? That means that this distance here is 2, and this is 3. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Right? So it will tell you. It allows you to be consistent with your staircase, too. So we know that this is the model for this staircase. Um, I bet you're all waiting for a formula, aren't you? Right? Slope. I need a formula. How do I figure this out? So. We can also say that the slope of a line is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Pretty standard formula, right? We've got these little subscripts here. What does that mean? That means we have to have two points to calculate the slope, right? And we all know that our coordinates come in the fashion of x and y. Well, let's say we have two of them. Now we're going to go ahead and label them x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And that will give us two coordinates. As long as we have this, we can plug in and calculate the slope. It's really easy. All right, so I've got this super fancy line here. Um, and I want to know what the slope is. Um, I want to use my formula that we just learned about. Do you remember what it is? Yes. It is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And remember, it's the same as rise over run, right? The rise over the run. So we're looking at the rise, which is the y's, over the run, which is the x. Um, so applying this, it looks like I need coordinates. Hmm. So, 1, 2 on my x, and 1 high on the y. Alrighty, so I got the first point. The second one looks like a doozy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 6 on my x. 1, 2, 3. And 3 on the y. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and plug this in and see what we get. This is really easy. Uh, uh, oh, I know it makes this easier. Let's label our coordinates. So now I have x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And now it looks like I can plug them in perfectly here. So where's my y2? Oh, it looks like it's a 3. And then I need to subtract my y1 minus. And then I'm going to do my x's. x2 minus x1. 3 minus 1, I told you this was easy, 2. 6 minus 2, 4. Look, it's a slope of 2 fours. Yes, yes, you can reduce that. 1 over
over 2. 1 over 2. What does that tell us? That tells me that every time it rises 1 unit, I've gone over 2 units, right? And look, 1, 2, and up 1. 1, 2, and up 1. 1, 2, and up 1. Oh, it's really easy. The last two things when talking about the slope of a line are what is the slope of a horizontal line? Um, a line like this that we so often see every day. That's right, the horizon or the horizontal. Yep, it's zero all the time. Every single time, zero. Easy enough, right? So what about a vertical line? Well, a vertical line is a little bit different, right? It's going up and down, right? And if we think back to rise over run, we see that the rise is definitely there, but there is no run, which means this is zero. Anything divided by zero is undefined. Anything divided by zero is undefined. Anything divided by zero is undefined. So we can always remember that a horizontal line is always zero. A vertical line is always undefined. I don't know.